little bit of snow today. We're having problems with this beer cooler. So let's go in here and see if the snow had anything to do with it in the colder temperatures or if it's just something broke down inside. They said the evaporators were not running. So let's take a peek and see what's going on. So it's not running at all. What they do is they take this little motor there, pump the cold air from in here out through the beer nozzle area and stuff like that to keep the uh, draft area cold. I think it's back in there. Now I've had problems with this thing leaking. I don't know if this one's got, yeah, it's got heater elements. They're not on. So with it having heater elements, there's a good chance that the defrost is a problem. Now I had some leaks on this thing and I think they might have replaced it. I had some writing on the back there. I don't see it, so I would say it probably probably was finally replaced. Let's go look outside and see what the uh, what's going on out there. What's behind door number one? Lots of snow. Not near as much as we just came from, but none of them are running. And there's the one we need. Beer walk-in cooler. Walk-in food cooler. Drive through, a little cooler there. Let's pop this puppy and take a peek inside and see what's going on with it. I'd say she's got some issues with the defrost. And behind door number two, we have a defrost clock that is setting there. Looks like we're kind of, should be out of the out of the zone there. You see that? Uh, we're, looks like we're out of it. It clicked and the light is still staying on. Now the heater elements were off because the uh, limit inside there probably tripped. There we go. I'm going to say let's kill the power to this and uh, get that replaced. I'm not real sure I need to go with this freaking thing again or not, but yeah, we could use a regular one technically. It'll be fine. I've got that clock. I just don't really like the way that it uh, 15 minute increments instead of smaller increments and these have a tendency to get dirt in them I mean they're kind of neat but these little relays as you can see stick and they're more money yeah I don't think that other one would fit right in there very well let's just put the same stupid thing in why overthink it it's a DTAV I always kind of want to call it Dave, but DTA B40. But, uh, let's get this thing on there. I believe it released. We've got a. There we go. That liquid's just slowly going through. We're gonna watch this for a bit. It wouldn't surprise me if it's low, especially today. If it's, uh, if it's low, you're gonna see it today. It's somewhere around 16. Yeah, that's really, really, really great. It's cutting out on low pressure switch. So, and that looks pretty empty. Well, let's go check the thermostat. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's it's just cycling off. It's so freaking cold. That sight glass is like crap. All the refrigerants acts like it's out here. We'll give it a minute. We have to add some. Okay, so you can see our pressures are super low. Sight glass is practically empty. We're gonna dump some in there, we'll do a scan, but maybe they didn't change that evaporator yet. I've been telling them for a while. I think I found it low way back. Uh, this thing was started up in 12. Found it low in 17, it was two and a half pounds. Found it low again in 20. So who knows? And I think it happened again since then. So let's just dump some in, see where we're at. All right, guys, I've added about three and a half pounds and my head pressure is about 90. Uh, we're running 404. What I uh, believe what's going on is our headmaster there is having issues. And if you look at it, it is not sending any heat to the receiver at all. It's not feeding. 
So unfortunately, it appears we have us a bad headmaster control. If you take a look at the pressures here, we're running about 87. So we're running about a 40 degree condensing temperature. That sucks. Uh, this thing is not in the greatest of shapes. Let's um, lock off some of the airflow. They've conveniently got some cardboard over here. Let's uh, see what we can do with this. Okay, we'll watch our head start to cruise up. We've got it pretty much completely blocked off. Still pretty empty there. Let's see if we can get up there in the 90 degree, 100 degree area and see where we come in at with our our side glass there I'm not real sure what the total charge was on this I think they uh, forgot to write that down unless we are just really low but it's not feeding that's for certain I don't think they wrote down the freaking charge mount yeah I ain't getting it not getting it let's see if we can kill these fans I don't think we're gonna, I don't know, we probably could get one a day, I'm not sure. It's quite a distant drive back to get it, and then not to mention how long it's gonna take to do it. Maybe we can put a fan cycle control on this thing, get us by until we come back earlier in a day sometime, because we're already almost two o'clock. We're building, but still, you know, still ain't getting her done yet. Freaking oil everywhere. Filter dryers are rusting out. We got oil down in there, which, an awfully lot of oil wouldn't surprise me if we ain't leaking in, leaking in that uh, aluminum coil okay we got the fans off pressure starting to finally build up sight glass getting better might still be low I don't think it's clamping it off it could be clamping it off I mean that's pretty warm on that receiver it might be low it should have uh, tried to open it up yeah look at that we got that much head pressure and she still is not there yet. Bring this fans back on. Add a little bit more to it. Maybe we do got that leak going on out here on the uh, coil. You have to take some time to take a good uh, search there. She's starting to fill up there. Sorta. I think we're just pretty low. Things act funny when it's a little cold out. Yeah, that receiver is warm. If that was liquid, it wouldn't be warm. Tall tail sign that it's uh, low on charge. I think we got us a hellacious leak here. That's a pretty good sized receiver. I think we just went solid at about six and a half pounds. And she just went bubbles again. Seven and a half pounds. This is a thirsty little burger. We got us a good sized leak somewhere. Hopefully it's still the evaporator, but I'm telling you that oil out here came from somewhere, but like I said, you never know. People change compressors, they dump oil everywhere, don't clean up their mess. But that looks pretty factory right there. There was solid again. Eight pounds. Take her on up to eight and a half for good measure. See how this thing feels. It feels good on my hands, I'll tell you that much. Okay, let's stop there. Yeah, get a little heat out of that. Put that up there. Kind of curious if uh, we take that off, if the uh, head pressure holds, maybe that valve needed more refrigerant to be able to start working right. I would have figured it would have opened up right away or we just didn't have enough refrigerant to notice it bleeding by. Well, it looks like that right fan's doing a different, different speed there. Open it up for more air to go through. That valve is set up for 180. Flashing off. Also dropping in head pressure, so the valve is not doing its job. 
we'll uh, go ahead and pull this completely out, see what it does. Yeah, but right now, thinks that cardboard 24 is still dropping. Let's see what happens here. I'm pretty sure that thing should have been bleeding through. I've only had about two, two or three of those go bad so far. Not a lot to it, just a freaking spring. Yeah, she's nose diving. Nope. Sit down. Not doing so good. Going cold. All right, so I'm scanning the inside of the coil here, scanning the back, scanning the front. You can see the TXV's feeding, and even if the TXV wasn't feeding, you would have backed up your refrigerant back to the sight glass, which I'm not seeing any oil, anything in here. And this is a newer coil, so uh, this has been updated. So where's my leak? I'm wondering, is it above the ceiling somewhere, going all the way back to the back? Uh, you just scan the outside, which I'm going to go back out there and scan again, but I'm not seeing anything even there. The only place we're getting a hit is right on that freaking cap. That's on super. Let's go to and go to uh, parts per million. See how big it is. Oh wow, uh, that's pretty good size. Holy crap! Yeah, that's pretty good size. I don't know why super wasn't going nuts more than that. It should be. It's so cold out here. Everything's just shrunk. Yeah, that's a pretty good size one. Well, shoot guys, I've completely scanned all that condenser coil front and back, got all up inside here, ran it with the fans off to drive the head up to 300 plus pounds and didn't get anything. So that's the only place I've got it. I'd spray that thing if I can even get it to bubble. That thing's gotta be pretty bad. Luckily this is pretty warm. So it should uh, just go berserko. Yeah. And that's with uh, 100 pounds of pressure on it. So it's uh, definitely gonna leak out pretty fast. So we got a bad uh, headmaster and we've got a low unit along with the bad defrost clock. Pass the, uh, pass the goodies around, right? Uh-oh. There we go. There's that. Okay, so what we ended up doing, we put a T on there, made sure we oiled all of our fittings before we tightened them up. Tightened up that fitting there that's leaking, wire tied it to here. This is all temporary. I'll probably be back on Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that is my speculation. Uh, all this is kind of temporary. Otherwise, I'd like to see, you know, Romex connectors, all that crap. Right now, what I did is I only broke one fan just to see where we're at. And I'm having to block the fan off on the other one, uh, other side of the condenser, to try to even get it up close to 90. And so I'm going to have to break both fans. It's just too cold out here. Uh, to really do much with it. Yeah, it's gonna dive right back down again. So we'll just break both fans. Uh, but this is gonna get us by, so I just tapped in there, ran the one through and uh, did our thing, but that's gonna dry, die, dive off. Side glass is staying full. When I come back and change that head uh, pressure control, I'm gonna chop that stupid uh, valve out of there that thing is just uh, pain in the hiney there's no it's it's going bye-bye yeah you can see we're flashing off that's not going to work being down here in the 70s so let's go ahead and get that both fans on there got her wired up with both fans now cycling on about 110 area and kicking off right around 90 so it's about a 20 degree swing don't want to get too much cause the txv to start hunting all over the place what i'm going to do now is throw it in defrost i'm going to check my level in my receiver to see where i'm at it uh you don't hold a whole lot of 
liquid in these little coils as far as the micro channel. So I want to make sure we got plenty. Uh, this is one of the few that we've got that actually has a solenoid at the uh, evaporator. So it's not going to be as near a, an issue as uh, some of them are when, uh, you know what, look at that. Look at the bubbles around the receiver. I think that receiver's leaking, unless it's vibration, but that sure looks like that. That would make sense why all that uh, oil is down there. That makes sense. I need to scan that receiver a little closer. I think that sucker's leaking. I'm almost positive it's leaking. Sure seems like it. This also gives us a chance to see if uh, it shuts off like it should. Not that we really care if it's perfectly clean at this time of the year, but the condenser coil is clean. And she's slowly shutting off there at seven pounds. Let's uh, heat that thing up and see what we're at. Well, we can see here that the very, very bottom is where the liquid is at. So we're nowhere near full. However, the uh, system's gonna have to be recovered when I come back, and I really don't wanna have to recover more than what I uh, need to. So I'm just going to uh, leave it where it's at because we're staying solid on our sight glass, and then we'll, uh, we'll charge it up all the way to uh, 80% when we're done. Right now, everything's secured. Uh, and we should be good to go. Uh, it should be dropping in there, and like I said, head pressure, everything looks pretty good, and it can pump down. Uh, it'll be going into a defrost here in probably three hours, which, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We should be good then. So, let's gonna wrap this one up, guys. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook, and until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.